Do you love to model? I certainly do. Do you also love architecture? Boy, I just love architecture. If that's the case, then I have just the thing for you. The nice folks at the ITLA Scale Modeling Company have come out with a brand new line of modular wall sections in a number of different scales, model railroading scales. You might have seen the ads around. I certainly have seen the ads around. And I just, I fell in love with this one particular building. In fact, I became obsessed with it. I wanted to make this exact building. Now the model comes from kind of generic research on buildings that are mostly abandoned now in the northeast of the U.S. and also the east coast of Canada. Notice how they build them. Kind of modular bits. Now dealing with this particular model, I had to find out exactly what was needed. I ended up buying a whole pile of these what you might consider as mini kits. And of all things, they want me to use rattle cans. You start out by painting the back of all of the pieces just in case you want to add lighting to it. I don't know if you really need it in this one but I did it anyway. And then the different colors come in the same backing so I had to do creative taping to mask them all off. Now with this rattle can paint don't paint this stuff inside. You'll die if you paint it inside. Paint it outside someplace and make sure you have lots and lots of ventilation. After the paint dried and all the tape was taken off, I had a whole pile of different colored stuff. Now to get the parts out of the backing, you can either pu push them out like I did here, or what I did a lot of times is I just broke the backing in two. But if you break the backing, be very careful because some of the parts are very fragile. After you get the parts out, there are a few nubs here and there that you need to attend to. And what you do is you just take your fingernail file and clean them up. And before long, you have a whole pile of parts. Boy, it looks pretty intimidating to me. We'll see how it all works out. Oh no, look at that! My tape job wasn't the best. So get out the rattle cans, I gotta repaint some stuff. Moving along, it's time to paint some of the windows. I asked the folks here at ITLA about why you wanted the colors, and they say that if the window breaks up, sometimes they replace it with something other than glass. And then, okay, we got this big pile of parts. Still pretty intimidating, if you ask me. So I set everything up, I got everything in the little containers ready to start putting together. And oh no, I forgot to put the Roberts brick mortar on there. Really brings out the texture that's burned into the parts. You can use it in plastic or wood. Here you can tell the difference between one that has the Roberts on it, the one on the left of course, and the one that does not have it. Makes a world of difference. Okay, so. Let's get started. What you do is you just friction push them in there. They generally almost always stay in place, which is convenient. You don't have to fight with them. And you can either have them inset like I have mine, or you can make them flush with the front. Your choice, whatever you happen to like the look of. Once you get that, to hold them in place, you put a little bit of glue in the back, and it'll keep everything in place. So now I've got all of the small parts of the bricks in place. Now I have to decide what are the big ones going to take windows, what are the big ones going to take the brick sections. And in each one of the little mini kits it gives you a picture. So I had to figure out from the main ad what pieces go where. Now when you put these windows in you want to use a clear glue. Micro Crystal Clear is one and then that uh, other one that I had there. You have two choices with the windows also. You can either leave them whole or you can cut out the center and make them so they open. You want to make sure that these window sections fit in just right. If they're too tight into the big holes, they'll buckle. So let's have a look here. Here are some of the sections that I made comparing them to what the mini kit pictures look like. Yeah, they look pretty good. They look pretty much the same. Now you want to keep track of which parts go where. So what I did is I marked on the back of the part exactly the number and then I wrote the same number on the picture to keep them straight. When you're building this or any model you want to make sure to keep everything in place while the glue is drying so I always have lots and lots of handy helpers around. The largest particular piece in this model is the backing and I wanted to make sure it was all completely straight because it was a whole bunch of different parts. Once that glue dried I decided it wasn't strong enough so I added a little backing. If you put backing on make sure that you can't see it from the outside and it doesn't interfere. The next step is well, we got to get ready for the roof. So you got to mark where the roof is going to be sitting. And then once you get the mark 
all the way around then you put some backing in it does not come with the kit so you gotta have some kind of scrap bit of wood that you can use for backing looking at the wall there you can see where the different modules go together it makes a zigzag you have a choice of putting on one two or three layers of trim on top I went with two why because I just happen to like it now this trims very hard stuff it's hard to cut it's easy work though if you have some nippers now here's what it looks like with the two layers of trim now there is a very distinctive up and down on these trims so you gotta look at them now when you want to make one or two extra layers on top you gotta take and cut them use a razor saw and a uh, jig and there's the top section the fourth floor that's going on the elevator now when you glue these parts together you want to make sure that it's very square very consistent because of course everything goes together now you will have had a whole bunch of little bits 90 degree bits from the original backing and you can put those to good use holding things in place and boy when you glue those on it makes it really strong and at this time if you're deciding to adding light this is a time to add the lights and then before long you get this great big pile of well modules getting ready to go together not quite as intimidating as it was what time is it now it's time to make the roof so I drew one up and there you have it it's finally time to start gluing things together and while I was making the roof I also made a floor it just made it a whole lot easier to glue things together making sure that everything's nice 90 degrees and here you can see the basic structure glued together everything except the back I still have to work on the wires and oh no the roof doesn't fit well it's not too bad it's still a little bit off it was just a guess when I put it together so a little cut 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 and then before long you know it fit right in the hole just fine next step is to put on the fire escape comes with a very interesting set of parts you actually use the jig that's built into it so you built the different landings right in the jig just like that very interesting way to do it next thing you want to do is glue them on the side of the building make sure they're nice and straight and get them all correct these are real delicate pieces but as you can see when you're done with it comes out really nice another thing that comes available for the kit is roof air conditioning units and I couldn't quite get it exactly the same as the one in the picture but pretty close before long you end up with a whole pile of bits and pieces for your air conditioner oh don't forget about putting the top house on the building I almost forgot that one and then you put the air conditioning ducts in place and glue them on and it almost looks like something you might expect to see in a real building pretty cool huh and this is what it's starting to look like all the pieces are in place it's not exactly the same as the one in the ad but it's pretty darn close close enough for me anyway and there you have it the finished model boy this was a whole lot of fun it was really easy and you can take these mini kits these modules and build them any which way you want and how did the lighting come out well it came out just like I wanted I didn't want the whole structure lit up I just wanted parts of it lit up came out really nice now here you have the finished model and like I say in a second ago you can build it any which way you want you can have any size tall wide whatever using these modules and here's my finished kit and there's the original ad what do you think pretty close maybe not exactly the same but pretty darn close and let me tell you I had lots and lots of fun building this structure now the question is what am I going to do with this behemoth it's a great big thing and really nice fortunately I've got plenty of room in my layout so if I run a spur over here and maybe change the road to go back over there or maybe I'll push it back a little bit you know what I mean so go have a look around the ITLA website and I'm sure you'll find something you like they're a lot of fun they're great folks here's the web address for you go check it out